Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Today we are back over at the Avery to take a look at its final occupant, the Pelagornis. This giant bird lived from around 25 million years ago and became extinct around 3 million years ago, just before the earliest humans appeared on the planet. It is the largest flying bird ever discovered, with a wingspan of up to 24 foot, that's around 7.3 meters, and beats the previous record holder, the Argentavis, by about 4 foot. Scientists first discovered the fossilised remains of the extinct creature in 1983 in South Carolina when construction workers started excavations on a new terminal at Charleston International Airport. This species has short legs, thin hollow bones and giant wings. This meant that it would have been an excellent flyer, but not very comfortable on land. It probably spent most of its life at sea where it could have travelled extreme distances without stopping and could probably fly for miles without flapping its wings. Instead, it would rely on thermal currents and rising air pockets coming off the sea to stay aloft. It probably used a method of flying called dynamic soaring, swooping low over the waves and taking advantage of denser air over rising waves. I covered this technique of flying in my talk about the, the pterosaurs, and if you go back and watch that, you can see a video clip of a modern albatross using this technique. Scientists have used computer models to assess the Pelagornis' flying capability. With an estimated mass of between 22 and 40 kilograms, it is considered too heavy to be able to fly, but its remains clearly show that it was a flyer. The computer models have shown that it would have been too heavy to take off from just flapping its wings, and would have had to either jump off a cliff like a hang glider, or run downhill into a headwind to achieve the necessary updraft to take off. But once it was in the air, it would have been a masterful flyer. Along with its size, the most striking feature of the Pelagornis is its beak. If you take a look, you will see what appears to be teeth. But these are not true teeth, they are pseudo-teeth. The earliest birds had true teeth. Scientists of the late 19th century knew this, and this trait connects early birds with their feathery non-avian dinosaur ancestors. However, multiple ninjas of early birds evolved totally toothless beaks. Why this happened isn't entirely clear. The evolution of beaks may have constrained and ultimately halted tooth development, while gizzards took over a food processing role internally. What is known, though, is that there hasn't been a true toothy bird since the end Cretaceous mass extinction wiped out the last of them about 66 million years ago. Once birds evolved toothless beaks, that evolutionary pathway was lost forever. Although embryonic chickens can grow tiny tooth nubs, their natural mutation is lethal, and proto-teeth that are induced by laboratory manipulation are re reabsorbed back into the beak later in development. Genetic and developmental changes have barred birds from re-evolving true teeth made of dentin and enamel. Yet for some birds, having a mouth full of spikes or ridges to grab food could be quite handy. This is where Pelagornis and kin come in. With teeth totally lost, the bones and beaks of these birds evolved novel structures that mimicked the long lost teeth of their ancestors. These spikes are not teeth. There's no dentin, enamel or other tooth defining tissues present in these structures. They are made of true bone, and would have been covered by the same tough, flexible material as the rest of the beak. As this could be problematic as the beak grew, it's likely that the juvenile Pelagornis did not have these pseudo-teeth until the beak had fully grown, and so may have had a different diet to the adults, who would have used them to grip slippery fish. Or they may have relied upon their parents to provide food for them for an extended period of their life. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the talk and you've learned something new. Please let me know what you think down in the comment section and please come back next time for some more educational talks about the creatures here in ARC. Thank you and goodbye.